Good morning. morning. Welcome to Mayo Church. It is wonderful to be here this morning and uh, just thank you and we are so humbled for those who are uh, watching and listening um, wherever you are on our live stream. We just thank you and we welcome you into this sanctuary just the same. So um, we are a church who loves God, who loves people, and nothing else matters. And so we come today in the spirit of worship and we ask that you uh, look to the back of your bulletin for the announcements. There are few because we're preparing and we're thinking and we're brainstorming and we're getting things together for Advent, for uh, the ways that we celebrate the birth of Christ in the Methodist Church. And uh, we love our, glor- our, our beautiful ancient traditions. And so we've been working to make that extra special for you this year. Um, by way of birthdays, happy birthday to Rhonda Pat happy birthday. on November 7th. Did you play your own birthday song today? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kelly Colvin on November the 9th. Um, are there other announcements this morning? If you think of something, feel free during our, our prayers and joys and concerns to to uh, share with us at that time. Um, Now, if you open your bulletin to the call to worship, you will say with me, in the emboldened is your part. Faithful Redeemer, you are the beginning and the ending of all things. You promise to wipe wipe away away every tear. You promise that death and mourning will be no more. You make your home among us. You You abide abide with us as our God. Teach us to live as the saints and uh, you call us to be, that we may truly be your people, living and doing your will. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, amen. I think the head pastor can say all of that, don't you? It's okay. Who am I to correct Pastor Amy, right? Will you pray with me our prayer of illumination? God of generations past and generations to come, of DNA that weaves us directly to ours before our time, you are faithful and worthy of our trust. As we remember your saint Elijah today on All Saints Day, allow us to hear your word with Elijah, a new yet ancient, combing out the most abundant ways you provide escape hatches, and through routes that lead us right back to your love, your mercy, your grace. Keep sustaining us through the saints, dear Lord. And Lord, in your mercy, please hear my prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Greta. Good morning, Mayo Church. Welcome this morning. I'm Reverend Amy Chapman. Pleased to be your pastor here in this congregation. I'm pleased to welcome you. If you're visiting this morning, we hope you'll take just a moment and connect with us online, especially if you're visiting online. Uh, That's what the comments are there for, for you to connect uh, with this body in worship this morning. So take a minute and connect. Be sure to share prayer requests or any announcements you want to share there in the comment section. And of course, if you're here with us in person, We want to welcome you if you're visiting. We do have some visitor cards. Uh, Fill those out and be sure to drop those in the offering plate today before you leave uh, so that we can make a connection with you on a deeper level. What a wonderful morning. Cool and crisp, a little bit of extra time. I'm, I'm finishing up a steroid pack, so I'm like antsy. If you catch me talking at ultra speed, you know I talk fast anyway, but I'm feeling just kind of you know, a little bit antsy anyway. So the time change was kind to me and a little bit of extra sleep, and I'm up and raring and ready to go. I hope you are too. How, uh, to do that, let's stand up. Let's stand up and greet one another and turn to one another and offer here in this space God's presence of peace here with us.
And after a time, when you're ready, if you'll turn to our opening hymn, number 701, and let's set our mind on things above this morning as we sing the hymn of praise when we all get to heaven, number 701. Just a couple of housekeeping things before we turn to our prayer joys and concerns this morning. Uh, again, the comment section there in, in your online worship, if you'll utilize that to communicate with us any prayer needs that you have, uh, and Lauren will share those with the full congregation so that we can join you in prayer with those today. Also, if you have someone you want to remember on this All Saints Sunday, uh, who has served faithfully uh, and has passed on, passed on this previous year. If you want to mention those names, uh, a little bit of housekeeping. I have some green index cards in the narthex where you entered there. Uh, if you would take those and write down a name, uh, if it is not already on the back of our bulletin. And Lauren, I'll ask you if you'll get one of those cards and anyone that's named online that wants to be remembered today, we want to make sure you're included in that special time of remembrance. Uh, so if the name is not on the back of the card and you would like to use this space uh, to honor someone today, please get one of the cards in the narthex and uh, just bring that up here with you at the time of the naming of the saints later in the service. Again, today, happy birthday, Rhonda. And yeah, that's today. Happy birthday. And then on Tuesday, Kelly Colvin. I don't see any anniversaries. Are there any that we've left out that want to be mentioned? 
me that's online. A lot of time of celebration. What have we got to be thankful for today, friends? Oh, Luke, Lucas Atkins. Happy birthday to you yesterday, Lucas. That's on November 6th then. And we celebrate and answered prayer requests that uh, the newlyweds are home safe and sound and soon to be reunited with for family. <laughs> Karen and Barry have been uh, puppy sitting while they've been on their honeymoon. As all grandchildren get to, they're going to get to go home today too. So that's exciting. Yes. Wonderful. Good news. Yeah. Celebrate with. Bill Tom, um, he thought he was going to have uh, sustained injury and might even lose his eye, but he got here this morning, and you can tell God's done a mighty work, and so we're thankful for that healing and I pray that it continues. Any others that we want to celebrate? Any that are in need this morning that you would like to share? While we, while we rejoice in the healing, Bill Tom asked that we remember him for some other test results that revealed some ongoing um, trouble in his body. And so just remember him in prayer as he continues to figure out what's going on and, and, to, and to treat it and to trust in the Lord. Any others? I saw Jeff had... Lester Jones? for the family of Lester Jones. One other housekeeping. Um, have a couple children that are here in worship with us. We do have a nursery program downstairs that Miss Christina and Miss Donna are there. If anyone at any point during the service needs to go uh, downstairs, feel free to do that at any time. It doesn't have to be a formal, a formal announcement. Just feel free any time during the service that you need to to, to go downstairs and a visit Miss Donna and Miss Christina in the nursery today. All right. If there aren't any other prayer concerns, any online, Lauren, that we want to mention? For the Long family, for Deb and Teresa and Pam and all their family. And let's again remember Sally Siegel. Any others? Well, let's turn to our hymn of prayer as we center our hearts then on God's presence here as we come into this time of, of prayer. Let's sing together hymn number 723, Shall We Gather at the River.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your holy saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which you have prepared for those who sincerely love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O oh God, we ask now that you would give us hearts to truly love you, hearts that are not of our own making, but hearts that have been made clean by the mystery and the power of the Holy Spirit at work. God, we come this morning in joy. Even in what seems like pain or grief, O oh God, on this day of remembrance, to recall what we don't have. God, we give thanks. We remember, O oh God, that you are present, that you are with us, that you love us. And, O oh God, that you welcome us. So, God, I just pray now that there would be a spirit here among us as we pray. As we pray for those in our family whom we dearly love. As we lift to you now, silently in our hearts, the names of those whom we bring to prayer now. For these, O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we give you thanks for healing and restoration, for what we've witnessed so far already in Bill Tom's life and for that which is to come. God, we trust and know that you are, are doing a mighty work in him and his body and in his life. So for our brother Bill Tom, we pray and we give thanks. In your mercy, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. God, for our uh, Pam long for her sisters, Teresa and Deb, for all that they are battling, for our sister Sally, for all these, O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we rejoice and give thanks for answered prayers for John Mandola. We thank you for safe returns for those who are traveling. God, we ask that you would be near to them. Steady their hand, make them attentive, O oh God, and guide them in your paths and bring them home to safety. God, for those this day who mourn afresh, especially, O oh God, for the family of Lester Jones, as our brother Jeff has lifted. For these, O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And O oh God, we thank you now that we have been given words to say when it seems there are none. And so we lean wholly into the Lord's Prayer as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to the offertory and let us give as each is able for the benefit of Christ's church and of God's world.
Never mind. Our reading is from Psalm 34, 1 through 10 and 18, the words of King David. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will, I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. The poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, let us give as each is able for the benefit of Christ's church and for God's world. I hear the music ringing and echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake. Will you pray with me? Heavenly One, like your saints who have gone before us, we pray that you will help us be bold in our mission and in our witness. May we who have been given so much give freely, ministering in your compassion to the multitudes near to us and far from us so that one day we may stand amidst the multitude that gathers at your heavenly throne. We pray this in the name of our Savior and our Redeemer, Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning again. If you're new here to Mayo Church, you're just in time for some good news from First Kings. 
How often do we get to hear preaching from First Kings? <laughs> we, uh, we have journeyed from Genesis all the way kind of mid here in the story of prophets and kings, and we come today to Elijah. I remember last week that we heard about King Solomon, uh, David and Bathsheba's son, Solomon who built the temple in Jerusalem, but as Solomon's 40-year reign ends, we find the people split into a northern and southern kingdom of Israel and Judah. And so today's story takes place during the reign of Ahab, who was the seventh king of the northern kingdom. And Ahab, we read, did not follow God's word. In addition, Ahab is known for marrying a princess from a foreign nation who brought with her the religious, cultural, uh, political, economic traditions of her own upbringing. And her name was Jezebel. I'm sure that you have heard the name Jezebel. If not this particular Jezebel, you've probably heard that name. It's in Elvis' song, so that's fun. Uh, from a young age, I was familiar with it because my granny used that name for, to describe any woman who she thought was just awful. Well, that Jezebel. <laughs> so Jezebel must have been pretty scary because the prophet Elijah, he was terrified of her. But in an attempt to bring Ahab and Jezebel to faithfulness, Elijah declares that there would be no rain in Israel until they repented and they turned to following God, to following God's way. Elijah then went and left, and he went to stay with a foreign widow and her son, promising that the widow's jar of flour and oil would never run out, and even healing her son when he fell ill, the widow of Zarephath. In this third year, while he's here, it's of this drought, Elijah has a standoff with the royal court prophets, and they and Elijah go into battle, and they each set up the sacrifice on top of Mount Carmel with the wood and the animal ready, and then they call on their respective gods to send a fire. And on one side, on, on one team, we have the god Baal. Okay? And on the opposing side, we have the one true god. Oh, come on! There we go, there we go. All right, so we got this battle here. So the false god Baal, his, his time's on. And crickets. Nothing. Nothing happens, okay? Bells, he doesn't do anything. But the one true God, in a spectacular way, causes this great fire. And everyone declares, the Lord is God. Everyone, of course, except Jezebel and Ahab. And Elijah takes this opportunity of success, and he goes ahead and he has all of the court prophets killed. And we pick up the story here today in 1 Kings 19 here in the royal palace. It's as the kings are reporting to Queen Jezebel what's going on, what happened here on the mountain. And this is in 1 Kings chapter 19. I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the biblical text today, verses 1 through 18. So stay, stay with me here. It's on page 352 in your pew Bible if you want to follow along a little bit. So the narrator tells us that Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and that how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. And then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. And then he was afraid. So he got up and fled for his life and he came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. And he asked that he might die. It's enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. And then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. And he looked and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank, and he lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came a second time, and he touched him, and he said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. And he got up and ate and drank. And then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. At that place he came to a cave, and he spent the night there. 
And then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking to take my life, to take it away. And he, and he said, Go out and stand on the mountain, Elijah. Stand before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. And then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimsha, over king of Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Matola, as a prophet in your place. And whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will not leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Friends, this is the word of God. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks today for your word that illuminates in us the darkness and brings us to the light. So God, we ask now that you would cast out anything that would seek to have our attention other than the Holy Spirit here in this place. God, give us eyes and ears to see and hearts to listen and to obey. And, O oh God, may you be with me, the one who preaches, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be pleasing to you, O oh God, for you are my rock and my redeemer. In Christ's name, amen. One of the voices of assurance that has emerged for me recently is an author by the name of Emily P. Freeman. Emily has a book that's titled The Next Right Thing, and so I borrowed that uh, sermon title from her today. She also has a podcast uh, that for me is just a, a time, a, a peaceful time of, of refreshing, of listening for me. And the phrase that she uses, though, is not a new phrase, although it's a newfound popularity with its association with the Disney sequel, Frozen 2. Any, anybody seen Frozen 2? It's a good movie. You seen that one? So, not to spoil the movie for you, but there's a scene where this younger sister, Anna, she's in deep despair. She's very sad, and she's in a cave. Much like what I imagine Elijah is experiencing here, when you're just not sure how to go even one more step. And so, Anna begins to sing, and she sings these words. She says, I've seen dark before, but not like this. This is cold. This is empty. This is numb. The life I knew is over. The lights are out. Hello, darkness. My old friend. Yep. She doesn't sing that, but she should. Hello, darkness, she says. I'm ready to succumb. I follow you around. I always have, but you've gone to a place I cannot find. This grief has a gravity. It pulls me down. But a tiny voice whispers in my mind, You are lost. Hope is gone. But you must go on and do the next right thing. Maybe that's a little bit uh, different than the Disney vibe you're used to. <laughs> Not quite uh, super califragilisticexpialidocious there. But what the author of this podcast has done is she's taken this concept and she uses her time and her space to shed light on having the strength, 
on having the courage and the discernment to take whatever it is that we're going through at the time, whatever decisions that have to be made, and to identify what to do next. It's a, a short-term goal kind of living, or as my mamma loves to sing, living one day at a time. You know that old song, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. Emily Freeman admits that she herself was inspired by this phrase, do the next right thing, surprisingly not from the movie Frozen, but from a little book from her same publishing company that was printed in 1897. So that concept's been around for a long, long time. And it contained, this book that she found, it contained a poem called Ye Next Thing. Simply, Ye Next Thing. And she notes this about it on her blog. She says, the poem reads... From an old English parsonage down by the sea, there came in the twilight a message to me. Its quaint Saxon legend deeply engraven hath, it seems to me, teaching from heaven. And through the hours the quiet words ring like a low inspiration. Do the next thing. Many a questioning, many a fear, many a doubt hath its quieting here. Moment by moment, let down from heaven, time, opportunity, and guidance are given. Fear not tomorrow's child of the king. Trust them with Jesus. Do the next thing. Do it immediately. Do it with prayer. Do it reliantly, casting all care. Do it with reverence, tracing his hand who hath placed it before thee with earnest command, stayed on omnipotence, safe neath his wing, leave all results, do the next thing. And here we are, 122 years later, still hanging on to this wise advice, still paying attention to what is right before us, still trusting God to give us what we need for today strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow, knowing that God will give us what we need to know when we need to know it. Emily says, when we do our work, offer a prayer, lend a hand, or continue to move through the ordinary tasks of our regular days, we never know how people years from now may be impacted because of our faithfulness. That's not to say we have to get it all right. In fact, the person, she says, who wrote this poem named Minnie Paul struggled deeply with doubt. And she writes where she reveals part of her own journey in her journal. She says she was a writer, so she wrote down a lot of her experience. And here's what part of uh, her journal entry says about this poem. She says, there is just one thing to keep me from being blissfully happy, happy. And strangely enough, it is the last thing that I ever imagined would trouble me. I wish I could make up my mind about the reality of God. Though I believe in a vague sort of way, I have hours of anxious self-questionings. I cannot bring myself to the intense realization of the truth which I feel to be necessary. I am groping blindly, she says, and though I am trying to see God, yet a cloud is before my eyes, and I cannot even believe that God is behind it. Wow, isn't that how it goes? This woman who wrote, would you think that was the same woman who wrote that poem, Ye Next Thing? But she wrote this poem that's so thoughtful and so faith-filled. She herself recorded her own struggle with doubt and with questions. But she continued forward through mixed motives, through the shadows and the sun, through her own next things, even in the midst of her struggles. And now her words inspire a whole new generation to continue to press on. All these many years later, she could never have known the impact. I can only imagine the strength that it took for Elijah to continue. You know, we kind of give him a bad rap a little bit. Elijah's kind of like Paul. We're like, oh, silly Elijah. Of course God's there. But imagine, imagine what he was feeling the narrator tells us that Elijah was feeling fear. 
He feels in such a spiritual, emotional funk, is what I call it. I'm just in a funk that he wants to quit. He wants to end it. He wants to die. He's isolated. He's cut off from his community. And yes, while he exaggerates his situation, his emotions are, and his feelings are valid. I'm the only one left, he says. And God says, you're not. You're not the only one. What an incredibly vulnerable passage to read about Elijah, the great prophet whom we'll see on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus Christ standing. The prophet Elijah who called down fire from heaven, who rode on a chariot into heaven. We see his humanness, his sadness, his vulnerability here. And I'm encouraged. I hope you are too. This is the call of the Christian witness, isn't it? To be honest with one another. Not to pretend we have it all together. But to bear witness to the strength of God in our midst. And to do the next right thing. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in Philippians. He says, Dear brothers and sisters, I focus on this one thing. Focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Friends, you never know the impact that you have on another person. I can look around this sanctuary today and I can look at each one of you and I can tell you what an inspiration you have been to me in your witness of pressing on. I've had the privilege of seeing our church family in seasons of grief, in seasons of happiness, in times of want, and in times of plenty. We have journeyed together when I know that all you could manage to do was to find the strength to get out of the bed or to eat a meal. Or when you're in the bed and suddenly somebody calls and says, I'm going to bring by something for you to eat and it's there for you just as if an angel of the Lord prepared it the story of Elijah and his grief reminds us that though we may at times feel like we're the only one going through this it reminds us that we're not we're not alone in this world that God so loves God is ever present and sometimes even more so in the stillness and the quiet places than in the places that we expect for God to be. May it be so today, friends, in the name of our beloved Christ. Amen. Would you pray with me? Powerful God, although you can make your presence known anywhere you want, in a mighty wind, in an earthquake, or in a fire, God, you often speak to us in the sound of sheer silence. Help us now, O oh God, to hear, to get up, and to go forth. In Jesus' name, amen. As we turn our hearts to these names before us today, grace to you and peace from God who is and was and is to come, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the ruler of kings on earth, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Let us pray. O God of all holiness, you gave your saints different gifts on earth, but one holy city in heaven. Give us grace to follow their good example, that we may know the joy you have prepared for all who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I want to invite you to turn your attention to the altar table and to the saints' candles that are placed there. Uh, we have on the front pew here a small individual candle. Uh, when you come, if you will take one of those candles and use it to light the candle of the Holy Spirit and then use that candle 
uh, to light whichever candle you prefer. As the names are read, we'll have just a moment of silence. And again, I'll invite you, if you are visiting today and you don't have a name listed here, but you want to participate, uh, to have a green card, uh, to simply bring it up to me uh, during this time. And we will gladly celebrate the name of that saint with you. like for me to like that for you as the naming is read. If you'll just raise your hand, I'll be glad to light that candle for you, or Greta will do that as well. O oh God of both the living and the dead, we praise your holy name for all your servants who have finished their course in faith, especially these names that are given here. We pray that, encouraged by their example and strengthened by their fellowship, that we may be partakers with them of the inheritance of the saints in light through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Dolores Pickle. Linda Goggins. Andrew Lethe. Jane Pack. Jerry Spencer. Bill Daniels. Dan Ward. The name of Robert Hall. Are there others to be shared today? We honor and remember today the names of Jessica Melvin Yates,
Ben Cox. Kim Combs. Zelma McDowell. Name of Phyllis Honshill. Jackie Prater DeRosset. Finally, if you would remember the name in your own heart silently now and speak that name to God as we light this candle for all the saints who have gone before us. Knowing now the feast that is prepared for all who come, friends, you are invited to this table of grace. You don't have to be a United Methodist to partake of communion here. You don't have to be a member of this church. You simply need to be seeking God today. So you are invited to come as we recognize our own humanness, our own frailty, our own frail fragility. Here in our own midst, uh, we just ask that you would come with a clear heart, asking that God would give you clean hands. All are welcome here at this table of grace. This is the Lord's table and not ours. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not kept your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbor, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Blessed are you, God of creation and of all beginnings, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and of David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of apostles and martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so, with your people on earth and of all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, O God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who by the baptism of suffering, death, and resurrection you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. We remember, O God, that on the night that Jesus gave himself up for us, that he took the bread, that he blessed it, that he broke it, that he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. 
This is my body that is broken for you. As often as you drink, as you eat from this, do so in remembrance of me. And likewise, as the supper ended, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he gave thanks to God. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and drink from this cup. This is my body, the blood of the new covenant, shed for you. As often as you drink from it, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus. We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. O oh God, renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we've named here before you today and in our hearts. Since we are surrounded, O oh God, by such a great cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to be restored with this meal, to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, O oh God, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Beloved friends, the body of Christ. Christ, in his fullness, became broken so that we might be made whole. And Christ became empty so that we might be made full and know the fullness of Christ. This is the body and blood of Jesus, broken and shed for you and for me. The way we will participate today in the Lord's Supper, uh, we're inviting you to come. If you are uncomfortable with that, feel free again to stay where you are seated and we'll simply bring to you a cup and a piece of bread and give it to you. If you will come in the communion line here, there's not very many of us in person, so just kind of spread out a little bit uh, and, and just open your hands. To receive now the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. I will give you a piece of the bread, and Greta will give to you the cup today. You can come down this aisle and then back around this way. Come as you are able and as you desire to be served today.
what a beautiful time that we could come together and begin to um, begin again with the way communion perhaps used to be. Um, as we forge new ways and new paths of doing things, it's uh, so wonderful and refreshing to be together in this, this time of communion. Um, will you uh, share with me in our communion response, which is in your bulletin? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn of invitation is an invitation uh, to all the saints. Page 709. Come, let us join our friends above. Let's sing verses 1 and 4. be encouraged today to go forth in the grace and love and communion of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, knowing that you are being led in his name. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.